Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到外媒看中国，我是安博然。This tweet by a retired Indian naval officer caused a storm recently on Twitter after he claimed that this photo shows starving homeless people in Beijing waiting for jobs. Now, the only problem. That photo was actually taken way back in 2008, in the aftermath of the eight Richter scale Sichuan earthquake, which left 70,000 dead and many more homeless. So it got me thinking: What is the real situation for homeless people here in China? What is the government doing to help them? And why is it that homeless people are so rare on the streets of China's cities? Today we'll investigate. This is Reports on China. I'm Andy Borham here in Shanghai. Let's get reporting. A retired Navy commander called Sandeep Dawan caused a lot of laughs on Twitter this week after using this picture of the aftermath of the massive eight Richter scale earthquake in Sichuan Province back in 2008 to claim it showed starving homeless people in Beijing. His tweet, ironically on an account called Insightful Geopolitics, read, "Reality of China." In southeastern outskirts of Beijing, encountering record-breaking heat wave, migrant workers starved of both food and jobs still venture out to make a living in sweltering sun. They jostle for temporary jobs, sleep on streets, and stop eating to save money. His blatant lie was toppled very quickly by Shanghai Panda, who tweeted the following: "Exposing your lie is very easy. Just search this pic on Google." This pic was taken 15 years ago in 2008 in Sichuan, where earthquake survivors were resting in temporary shelters. By the way, people soon moved into better new houses rebuilt by the government. His reply included images of the new apartments built for residents who lost their homes after the massive quake. Now you'd think Sandeep would quickly realize his game was up, but that wasn't the case. In fact, the tweet is still there. Prompting some passionate responses, Chuck said, "Disgusting! You are disgusting. Your intellectual dishonesty is appalling. This is an image from a time during a natural disaster in China. The only insight to get from you is that you're a fraud." Lex's comment was more to the point: "You are the sludge at the bottom of the barrel." Even his fellow Indian comrades were not impressed with Lalit saying. Kalihe apa kamala tumara, which literally translates as "your cabinet, your upper cabinet is empty, or your brain is empty." So this raised the question: Why is it that homeless people are so uncommon on the streets of China's cities? We all know China lifted 800 million out of extreme poverty, but surely there are still homeless people, right? Where are they? Well, of course, China still has homeless people, but. The way they deal with them and support them clearly differs from other countries. Ivor did an awesome tweet about the actual situation for homeless people in China. He tweeted, "My cousin, who grew up in the United States, visits China every few years to see her family. Given how serious of a problem homelessness has become in the United States, I'm always intrigued when she points out how few vagrants and beggars there are in China's big cities." To answer her questions, I looked up some Chinese legislation on assisting urban vagrants and beggars, and discovered some interesting results. He's talking about this piece of legislation from 2003 called "Measures for the Administration of Assistance to Homeless People and Beggars in Cities," which has 18 articles detailing how governments across the country are required to support homeless people that they come across. Article three states. The people's governments of cities at or above the county level shall take active measures to rescue homeless people and beggars in a timely manner, and shall include the funds required for the rescue work into the financial budget to guarantee them. Article five basically orders staff in a number of areas, including public security, health workers, transportation and railway workers, and urban management officials, to help any homeless people they come across. To get help from special relief stations, who are not allowed to refuse help, there are hundreds of these relief stations for homeless people all across China. Shanghai has 18 in total, including one in each district. I found this one in the suburbs of Huangpu District. 
The relief stations offer all necessary assistance to homeless people, which is all clearly spelled out in Article 7. A rescue station shall provide the following assistance according to the needs of the recipients. 1. Provide food that meets food hygiene requirements. 2. Provide accommodation that meets the basic conditions. 3. For sudden illness in the station, send guests to the hospital for treatment in a timely manner. 4. Help to contact their relatives. 5. Provide passes to public transportation if the person has no money to buy a ticket home. Now, speaking of providing transport back home, a lot of people wonder if the reason Chinese cities are relatively free of homeless people is because the police force them to leave or go home. That's actually not true, but staff at the rescue centres are required to try their best to persuade them to return to their hometowns if possible. Homeless people are not required at all to stay in the rescue centres, and when they do, they can leave at any time. Article 11 says that staff at the centres shall not stop anyone from leaving the centres, but that they should try to persuade them to return home, even helping to contact relatives and previous employers of the homeless to seek support. If family members of homeless people are successfully contacted, the local government there is obliged by Article 12 to build support structures to ensure they are taken care of. It reads, The People's Government shall take measures to help the aid recipient resolve difficulties in their work and life, and educate the close relatives or other guardians of abandoned disabled persons, minors, elderly people or other guardians to fulfil their obligations of upbringing and support. Article 14 talks about how staff are obviously required to abide by the law, in dealing with homeless guests, and how if they beat, abuse, scold, extort, or steal from guests, or if they imprison homeless people, refuse to give daily supplies like food and other materials, or refuse to allow guests to file a complaint, they will be dealt with according to the law. Sounds pretty good to me. What do you think? Basically, what these measures ensure is that homeless people cannot be ignored in China. City employees and officials are literally required to help any homeless person they come across, and rescue centres are required to provide free lodging, food and other support, as well as the means to return home if possible. And that, my friends, is exactly why you don't see many homeless people on the streets in China, although of course they do exist. The exact number of homeless people is hard to ascertain, but a report by People's Daily in 2013, exactly 10 years after this law was passed, did a summary of how it had worked and what needs improving in its first 10 years. They state that in the first 10 years of these homeless guidelines being enacted, 15.645 million homeless people were helped across the country, which included 1.358 million minors, 641,000 mental patients, and around a million disabled people. Around 1.6 million people were given transport back to their hometowns. But eight major problems with the regulations were identified in the first 10 years that needed to be addressed. One of the main issues was homeless people refusing assistance and not wanting to stay in the rescue centres, which can lead to serious injury or even death in some regions during the cold winter months. The report said, At present there is no clear legal basis for protective rescue measures, and the Rescue Management Agency has no right to take protective rescue measures for those who do not want to enter the Rescue Management Agency to receive assistance, especially mentally handicapped mental patients, critically ill patients and the elderly. It adds great difficulty to the rescue work in severe winter. Another issue identified which doesn't seem to be covered in the existing legislation surrounds caring for homeless minors. The responsibility for the temporary guardianship of minors is not clear. In addition to providing board and lodging assistance to homeless minors, the Rescue Management Agency also needs to provide extended assistance services such as education and correction and assume the responsibility of temporary guardianship. However, it is generally reported that the education and management of minors over the age of 14 is relatively difficult. 
The current rescue management measures lack clear regulations on the guardianship and management of minors. So this year, 2023, marks exactly 20 years since China's homeless rescue legislation came into action, and 10 years since that report by People's Daily highlighting significant issues. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any updates this year, but it is quite likely that it just hasn't been released yet. I'm quite curious to see just how things have improved since 2013, and whether or not those eight major challenges have been addressed. So what do you think? Does this video answer your questions about the fact that homeless people are so rare on China's city streets? Do you think the legislation does enough? And what is the situation for homeless people in your country? As always, I'd love to know what you think, so do let me know down below. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.